Alrighty then. We had to fill a hole there <laughs> on that little fella. There's supposed to be a keyway up here. And before I put the keyway in there, I ought to get the hole back. I only get maybe one of these every four or five years. So I save them up. And then, of course, that one will get done. That one's been sitting around long enough that it's rusty. Uh, my V blocks are on another machine. So I'll set this up, and this is a way that you can you can uh, simulate a V-block with a horizontal table or even a vertical table. You can do something like this on a uh, knee miller like a bridge port. Um, you can either reference these slots are square with the world and I know where they're at. Uh, so now I know where the face of that angle plate is and of course knowing where the table is uh, now I have a 90 degree V and I'll clamp down and I'll pull it back with C clamps after I get it and you have to pull a lot of junk out and rig things up to do that but it's a it's a good sturdy setup and on this piece it'll rest on a three inch diameter and a two and three quarter diameter and to account for the two and three quarter I've got a uh, little tool steel pads um, on size. You can buy it in strips and saw it up and it's good to have a bunch of sizes laying around for when you have multiple diameters and v-blocks or if you need to shim something and you and you know what you want to do. Anyway we'll fly this piece up in here and I'll get a little pad stuck back here behind this shoulder because there's a let me set that there. There's a little radius in here that I've got to stay clear of the corner and pull everything back. And then since I'm going to be drilling it, I have to account for the Z. And I'll have to clamp it up and pull it up against that knee to make it solid. It should make sense when I'm back and, and uh, getting ready to machine. So we'll shut it off and get set up and get things clamped down. And... and uh, give her a go all right we're back here now uh, I've got a couple of half inch fine taps stuck in there and that's a little spirit level that I use also on the milling of the key seat this is not tight very tight and it's pushed back just hand tight there just trying to make it right. Of course I leveled it with those two little jacks and like on the keyway cutting I put a laser up just to see if there's an argument. But it matters not because there's a cap that holds a link on that taper and the four holes need to fit so I've got to stay square with those holes. <coughs> so and I could pull another clamp from the back of the knee and put it up here and that would work pretty decent but it, I'll just sling a couple of those over if I can. Hopefully I can. I did it before years ago with a similar setup so we'll see what goes on and then when we come back we should be uh, indicating and drilling. And then there's my little jacks. Alrighty then. I got everything clamped, put the, check the level, make sure it stayed put, it's good. Um, it's indicated in, but I wanted to show something that I do if I do have to indicate something in, and I checked it with my table, or what I thought I was from the table, and I'm right. If I sweep this, I'm going to come up zero zero on the X and I've set it to a little more than plus one on the on the positive Y and it'll show about one I've balanced it, it's about one and a half on the minus and that is because this 
of gravity, spring pressure, and other stuff when you're working with horizontal spindles. Um, when you go zero, zero on these, it's not zero. So there's always some sag because of the flex in this and spring pressure. And uh, it's basically something you figure out by turning the thing back around on your own spindle or using a similar rig on a bar and V-blocks and you turn it upside down and just note how much it generally reads wrong. So anyway, I'm there. Now these holes are 7 sixteenths from center line or 7 eighths inch apart. So we'll just move over 7 sixteenths and up 17 sixteenths and we'll put a we'll drill our hole and tap. sure what you can see and what you can't see because I don't have a remote for this thing that looks like you need to see all you need to see Our 7 16th up. And there's our 7 16th over. We'll spot it, it should look good. Get this thing to get a little cooling out here. I haven't run this for a while, so it may take a little bit before I get coolant.
looks at up close. They sure have a lot of junk attached to it to get that little bit done. We'll pull this off and get some close-ups of the setup. I'll let go of my camera. And in here you can see that uh, Other than the chamfer's missing, it's fine. But my clamps ended up, two of those bar clamps, pull it back the wrong way. You know, I'm good at pulling that the wrong way. Two bar clamps and a hold down clamp on the top. My little jacks, this little clamp's for lifting the damn thing. You know, knots and braiding in Boy Scouts helps. Send your kids to Scouts. You need a little, got little parts, make your own little straps. And this was my end stop for uh, drill pressure because with this setup, uh, that drill doesn't put very much pressure on something, but it's just a good idea. Drills do put more end pressure than people think, and, and uh, uh, I've been caught uh, and embarrassed myself before drilling holes and pushing things around in a horizontal situation like that. But if you don't have a V-block or what have you, you can make a right angle V-block like setup. And uh, it just seems like you get a lot of junk out. <laughs> and so we'll get it, uh, we'll get that in the right bunch with the rest of the shafts and get it keyed and, and get this all finished up on how to do one of these. Bye-bye. Mm,